it going, everybody? I'm Dr. Fest Luigi, and today we're going to be talking about flying in immersive vehicles. But first, I want to give a quick thank you to Bisect Hosting for sponsoring this vehicle, and we'll have more about them at the end. So, last time we went over how to set everything up so that you can drive in immersive vehicles. So that included, you know, how to assemble and disassemble vehicles, you know, by breaking stuff and putting it all on that sort of thing and then we also went over crafting different parts using these different benches how to fuel vehicles using the fuel pump all that fun stuff so if you need a refresher on any of that go ahead and watch the previous video part one the basics and because we're going to be using a lot of that in this video today so i'm going to kind of assume uh, you watched that video and with all that out of the way Let's just jump right in to flying. So we've got our quality UNU navigator here. So we're going to go ahead and place that down. As you see, it comes with the wheels, which is really handy. We're going to go ahead and grab our aircraft engine and put that in. And then because this is a propeller aircraft, an engine is useless without a propeller. So we'll go ahead and put a propeller on as well. Now, if you have a jet aircraft, then you won't need to worry about the propeller. So everything we're going to be going over today is going to be outlined in this uh, Minecraft Flight Simulator handbook. Now this is an homage to when this mod originally was developed under the name Minecraft Flight Simulator. It has since changed to Minecraft Transport Simulator and now Immersive Vehicles. So everything we're going to go over in this video is going to be outlined in this textbook here. But that's why we have the video, so we won't really need this today. So, we'll go ahead and start off with getting your airplane all prepped for takeoff. So make sure it has fuel. I'm using Creative Engine, so I don't really need to worry about that. And we'll go ahead and go over the instrument panel. Now, airplanes are a little different in that they'll typically have two different panels. You have the main panel, which is identical to what we used on the vehicles. This shows up when you're in the vehicle and third person and all that. But then we also have the control panel. Now the control panel is going to show up when you pull up that U panel that has all the switches for engines and headlights and that kind of thing. Now the control panel is special because these different slots refer to different engines. Now uh, this airplane has two engines so it's going to have basically two halves. So these six slots here refer to one of the engines and these six slots here refer to the other engine. Now this is supposed to be the left engine and the right engine, but on this particular vehicle, they're mixed up. It'll probably be fixed in the next update, but uh, I just want to give you a heads up. Sometimes things get a little mixed up and this is going to vary depending on the vehicle. So we're going to go ahead and I'm going to load up all the instruments and then show you the ones I've chosen and what they sort of do. All right, so I went ahead and made my HUD a little bigger. That way, uh, this is all easier to see. But as you can see, some of the gauges are a little wonky. This is the uh, official vehicle pack gauges, not quality UNU gauges, because UNU does not have quality aircraft gauges yet. But with that out of the way, uh, these are all pretty much the main gauges that I use. Because uh, I figure this really sets up everything you're going to need. But definitely check with the different packs as there are a lot of different gauge options out there. So the first gauge, this is your basic airspeed indicator. This is essentially just a speedometer. It shows how fast you're going. This lift reserve right here, again, this is a little wonky. But the gauge is going to show you how much lift reserve you have. And if you're in danger of stalling, which is means not moving your aircraft in a way that it's still generating lift. And if you're not generating lift, then you're not flying. This is your attitude indicator. This is going to show basically how your airplane is positioned. And so this is going to show mostly your pitch and your roll. Uh, so this is going to show kind of how your airplane is oriented, just in case you can't see the ground, you kind of lose track of that. This is your climb indicator. And this is going to show how fast you're rising or falling. And so if this gauge is up here in the positive, that means you're gaining altitude. And then if it's in the negative down here, that means you're losing altitude. 
So this is a great way of showing if you're flying level or if you're going up and down. Now this is your altitude indicator, and this is going to show your altitude. And so if it's spinning up, that means you're going up. If it's spinning down, you're going down. And it's a show basically if you're going to hit any mountains or anything. Now this is a beacon navigator, which we'll get into a little later. And then this is your tachometer, which is going to show the speed of the engines. Now, t specifically, this is going to show the speed of engine one, because all of these gauges are technically tied to the first part. However, uh, if you have both engines running and they're identical, then this is going to pretty much show the speed of both engines. Over here on the control panel, this is a little more blank. I've got the tachometers here. These are going to refer to each engine. And then I also have the trim indicator here, which we're going to talk about a little later as well. And I'll go ahead and add uh, an oil pressure gauge and a temperature gauge just so that we can kind of see how everything works with these being separate engines and everything. So that is going to basically set, set you up with all the gauges you're going to need. So I'll go and hop in. And as you see, a lot of the gauges are set up here on the panel. We also have a gauge down there. And then we also see the gauges right in front of us. Now, as you can see, we've only see the top row of gauges. We don't see the bottom ones. So to fix that, go ahead and open up your P menu, go into rendering. And here we have the first three lines are going to determine how your first person and third person HUD renders. So here we have the full HUD is set to false. So if I set it to true, now we can see all of our gauges. Now, when I have this full HUD like this, I like to set it to transparent. Uh, but if you don't want to do that, then you can have it turned off so you can see the little fancy texture there. Uh, so I have the full HUD as true and the transparent HUD as true and rendering it as true. So because you turn off rendering, then it completely disappears. And this is cool if you want to fly in first person and see all the gauges physically on the vehicle. I keep pressing U instead of P. And if we press U, as you've seen several times now, uh, this is our flying panel. So this is just like the panel that we used on the vehicles to start up the engine, turn on the headlights, that sort of thing. So this is the aircraft version. So as you see, we have these uh, instrument slots here. So this is our engine instruments, and then we also have our trim indicator here. And then we also have our trim controls, our autopilot, our landing gear, beacon, magneto, and all that. So these just turn on the different lights. And so if I go into third person here, I'm going to go ahead and turn off the gauges for a sec. We can see we have our navigation lights, which are just going to be those three little lights on the corners of the wings and everything. Then we have our strobe lights, which are going to be the blinky boys. We have our taxi lights and our landing lights, which are a lot brighter than they look. Uh, this is because we're close to the ground. And then of course, you can turn everything off on if you like. So we'll go ahead and leave our strobe and navigator lights on because it's kind of dark, so we kind of need that. And then I'll turn back on the big HUD here. So now that we've seen all these gauges, I'm going to go ahead and put my GUI scale back to normal. Uh, I guess that's a little bug. There we go. Uh, that way it doesn't take up the whole darn screen. So we'll go ahead and start up our airplane. So to start up the airplane, you have to first turn the magneto on and then hold the start button. Now, as you can see, I am uh, starting to spin here, so we'll go ahead and turn that off and we'll go over the controls. So, the controls are set up here in the aircraft keyboard and they are completely different from the normal vehicle controls. So, whereas with normal vehicles you had W was the gas, S was the brake, A and D is turning, uh, that's not the case here. So with the aircraft, you're going to kind of have both of your hands on the keyboard uh, in order to fly it properly. Now, of course, you can just use your right hand and mouse uh, when you're once you're kind of level in flight. But uh, you need your right hand on the keyboard as well to control your throttle and yaw. So 
your right hand on W A or sorry, your left hand on W A S D. W is going to control your pitch. S is going to control your pitch as well, so that's going to pitch you forward and back. A and D are going to control your roll, which is tilting side to side. And then mirror to that, you have your hand on I, J, K, L. And so I and K is going to control your throttle, and then J and L is going to control your yaw. Now, the way throttles work is a little different than on a vehicle in that... Uh, so the way throttles work is going to be a little different than a vehicle in that you don't go full throttle like you do on a vehicle. Instead, you control the throttle position. So on this model, the throttle is right here. And if I press I and hold it, you'd see it takes some time to go down to full throttle. And then if I hold K, it takes some time to go down back to zero. And anytime you let off, the throttle is going to hold itself in that position. So you are controlling the throttle position, not necessarily the throttle itself. So it, it will, you know, kind of stick in the different positions. And then you have your brake, which is the B key. Uh, so again, it's not S like on the vehicle, it's its own special key. And the parking brake is your right shift plus B. So very similar to the vehicle and how you hold that right shift key to set your parking brake. Panel is you, just like vehicles. Radio, guns, and all this we'll talk about uh, in the advanced section. Zoom in and out for third person is page up and down, just like last time. So if I press B, you can see the brake goes there. And then if I press B and right shift, so if I hold right shift and then tap B, you can see the parking brake turns on as well. So we're going to go ahead and leave the parking brake while we get started. And we'll start our engines one by one. As you see, our tachometer is right there showing that we have started the engine. Now, a handy thing about this vehicle in, in particular is if we have an engine on, this light will blink. And so if I turn this engine off, there's are both on, but they're not running. So you have these little warning lights blinking, which is pretty cool. And that's also a good way to tell once your engine is started, that light will stop blinking. So next, now we're getting ready to take off. So we'll go ahead and rev up our engines. So you see the tachometer there on the bottom. All right, so now our engines are all revved up and we're ready to take off. Now, one important thing to note about flying is to take off, you don't just pull straight back uh, like you do in like Grand Theft Auto and that sort of thing. You have to build up speed before you try to take off. So we'll go ahead and disable our brake. As you see, we start to level out as we gain some lift. Our lift reserve right here, uh, this gauge is a little too high, so imagine it's down a little more. As you can see, we're in the green, so we can start taking off. We pull back a bit, and we're airborne. And so now we can kind of, you know, pull back on our throttle a bit, and we are ready to rock. So now that we're in the air, we can go over, you know, sort of flying. It's because we're flying now. That's usually how that works. So we can fold up our landing gear by clicking this gear button right here. The yellow means that it's currently in progress. And then it turns red once the landing gear is fully stowed away. And then we can turn it back on as well. And the green means the gear is fully deployed. So that's a convenient little gear lever there. So as you see, according to our airspeed or sorry our climb indicator we are actually maintaining pretty level flight which is good now if i increase the throttle a bit you see the plane is going to start pitching back and we're going to gain altitude and then if i lower the throttle a bit we'll start pitching forward and we'll eventually start to lose altitude and so if you kind of play with the throttle just right you can get the airplane to fly level uh, all by itself, which is kind of a tricky thing to do. And so if you want to maintain level flight without having to finick the throttle like that, you can turn on autopilot. And it will automatically level out your plane. 
and then you can just go full throttle and you don't have to worry about pitching up. As you can see, we're maintaining nice, even flight here with this climb indicator. Now, what the autopilot is doing is it is setting your trim so that you can maintain level flight. So if you turn off autopilot, you can see we're still flying nice and level because that trim is already set. So I'm going to go ahead and make our GUI large again. Makes it a little easier to see. Now, this trim is a little funky. This indicator is messed up just like some of the other ones. Uh, but imagine this gauge down here, this gauge down here, and this one up here. So you can adjust your trim with these little wheels here. So if I adjust my roll trim, you'll notice that the plane will start to roll. So if I put it off to one side, you'd see the plane starts to roll. I have this little trim thing starts turning. And then, of course, I can level it back out. And then I can make it perfect with autopilot. So you could use these trims to sort of fix up how your plane is going. So for example, if I lower our throttle a bit... you can see uh, the plane starts pitching down and so I can kind of fix the pitch trim so the plane, the plane flies level. And so if I adjust the trim, it's basically like adjusting your controls but it's a little more perfect. So as you see, if I trim the pitch more, I start tilting up. If I trim it down, I start tilting down. And you can kind of use this pitch trim to find the perfect spot right there. So I'm going to go ahead and turn my GUI back to normal because there's a weird bug where if you change your GUI skill while you're in the vehicle it messes up the gauge positions. And I'm all wonky so I'm going to go ahead and turn back on autopilot to automatically fix the trim. Not all planes have autopilot. Most of them do but not all of them. So uh, don't necessarily rely on autopilot. All right, so that is pretty much the basics with uh, the panel here. So now we'll go ahead and talk about actual maneuvering. So uh, let me turn on some... Oh, I disabled that. Uh, here we go. And then how do I access my waypoints? Waypoint settings... Ah, well, let's say I just want to turn. Uh, turning is probably the most interesting thing to do in uh, while flying because you kind of think that you could just turn by yawing like this, but you'll see that we start turning and then the plane kind of turns back. And so this is a really slow and inefficient way to turn and it can be kind of frustrating. So the best way to turn is to use A and D to roll. And as you see, our little gauge here shows we're flying at an angle now. And then you can sort of pitch up. And that is pretty much the correct way to turn uh, in an aircraft. Is you pitch, or sorry, you roll, and then you pitch. And that's a really, really the best way to turn. All right. So now... Uh, I'm going to show you the panel here, so I'm going to turn on autopilot, make sure everything's all leveled out. So you'll see right here we have this beacon. So that's pretty much everything you need to know to fly. It's really straightforward once you get in the air. Uh, I'll go ahead and turn on our, off our strobe lights here. So you may remember in the beginning of the video there's that large red and white tower. And so that is a beacon for, you know, MTS, not the beacon like in vanilla Minecraft. So to navigate to a beacon, all you do is type the beacon name, which that one was named none. And if you enter a valid beacon, then the name will turn green. So for example, if I typed in zero, it turns red because there's no beacon named zero, but there is a beacon named none. So now you'd see that yellow arrow down here. What is up with my airplane? We're just going to kind of let autopilot do its thing for now. Uh, so I typed in the beacon name, and now you can see that this arrow is pointing left. 
And that means the beacon is, of course, to the left. The arrow points to where the beacon is. So I'm going to go ahead and turn. And if you just roll like this, then that's a nice slow way to turn. It's a very controlled way to turn. Whereas if you yaw, it's kind of back and forth. And now we're flying towards the beacon. And that's that. That's how the beacon whole thing works. It's super straightforward, but it is pretty handy. So now we're going to go ahead and talk about landing. Now landing is probably the most difficult thing to do, especially if you're not on an endless desert void. Uh, there's a fine line between landing and crashing. So we'll go ahead and start with our landing procedure. So here's how I like to do the landing. First, of course, you fold down your gear. Boop. Our landing gear is nice and folded out. Then I like to turn on the parking brake. So you can see now our parking brake is on. So as soon as we touch down, the plane will immediately start slowing down. Now it's very handy so you don't, you know, you're not trying to sit there and press the brake while navigating. So next, I'm going to turn autopilot off and then I'm going to start lowering my throttle. And so as you see, the throttle is getting lower. We're starting to descend and I'll sort of pitch to make sure that my plane stays level but you also want to keep an eye on your lift reserve because if this drops into the yellow or red, then you're going to be, you know, you're not going to be able to have any more lift and then you kind of get into that crashing territory. So here, as you see, we're getting closer to the ground. I'll lower my throttle a little more because I can. But you want to make sure you're not stalling, which is running out of that lift. So maintaining a nice even flight here as we slowly touch down. Boom. We, and as soon as we touch down, I'll go ahead and pull the throttle all the way. And we have landed. And that's that. That's landing. Uh, now, if you have an airplane with flaps, which this airplane is supposed to have, but there's some kind of weird bug, I'll go ahead and install a flap indicator to kind of demonstrate everything. So flap indicator is going to be this guy right here. And what flaps do, which they're controlled by Y and H right next to the I, J, K, L there, is you could set your flaps to sort of have more lift. So for, especially if you're in a larger aircraft, if you set your flaps down, like for example, I have them completely deployed here, then the wings will generate more lift and will make it easier to land and take off. But it's also going to reduce your speed. So once you start gathering speed, you want to fold those flaps up so that you can, you know, have nice, efficient flight. So basically, flaps just make it so your airplane can have more lift and take off a little quicker. But evidently, this plane, I guess, doesn't have flaps. It's supposed to, but that's a little bug. Uh, but yeah, that is flying. It really is that easy once you... No, not to just pull up constantly. Because if you try to take off and you're constantly trying to pull up, uh, you're going to have some trouble. But yeah, so just a brief recap. Uh, assembling airplanes is just like assembling cars, except you're also going to put on propellers if you need them. Then you could set up your instrument panel right here. Then you also have your control panel, which determines, or which is tied to different parts. And then you've also, you know, I always recommend certain gauges, like having this uh, attitude gauge here is very convenient because it shows how your plane is oriented. And then having this climb indicator is very important because it shows if you're gaining or losing altitude. And then a tachometer is nice because it kind of shows you where your engines are at. Honestly, if you're just flying in survival and, you know, navigation isn't super important, like you don't really care about how high you are or whatever, uh... I you really just need these three gauges, um, and then of course on your control panel, you've got your RPM and all that. So this is deter you know this is tied to specific uh, parts again, and then of course inside the plane, oh, 
you have your panel here. This is how you control your trim, which is basically fine-tuning your airplane so it flies level. Then you have your engines right here to you know start and stop them. And then you have your different lights, which again this is this is purely cosmetic. You have your autopilot to auto level your plane. You know, basically sets the trim automatically, which is super convenient. You got the beacon for navigation and your landing gear. But yeah, that's really all there is to it. I hope you found this video really useful, and uh, hopefully flying in immersive vehicles isn't as daunting as some people kind of think it is, because it can be pretty tough. So, in the next video, we're going to go over advanced use for immersive vehicles. And so that's going to include things like advanced part usage, so things like cosmetic parts. Uh, we're going to really get into the detail of how parts work, which is going to be pretty exciting. Also, we're going to talk about trailers, things like that. So basically everything else in MTS, traffic lights, uh, decorational blocks, there's a lot to unpack. And I would also like to thank Bisect Hosting for sponsoring this video. If you need a server host, I honestly recommend Bisect Hosting. I've used a lot of different server hosts throughout the years uh, for my modded survival server. And honestly, Bisect Hosting is by far the best server I've ever had. It's, it's pretty surprising what you know, a good server, how much of a difference that makes to have a good host. Uh, a lot more than RAM and other things. So if you decide that you'd want to try out Bisect Hosting, go ahead and use code Dr. Professor Luigi with no underscores, and that'll get you 25% off your first month and will, of course, help out the channel. And finally, if you want to directly help out the channel or my development of quality UNU products, go ahead and check out this channel on Patreon. Uh, you know, if you want to support us there, just like our fantastic Patreon, Ender the Strange. Currently, currently our only Patreon at the moment. But uh, hey, maybe you could join the club. Even a $1 donation gets you early access to all of the content packs I'm making. So you can enjoy cool things like the uh, or, you know Air Whale flying aircraft carrier and the Tradesman van and all sorts of stuff like that. But with all that out of the way, thank you for watching. And I'll see you guys next time.